In this video, we're going to be talking about a product called Luminar T, which is now integrated into MicroStation Connect Edition as of update 10. Luminar T allows us to take our three-dimensional models in MicroStation and then visualize them, bringing them into a three-dimensional world where we can add in trees and cars and people and atmospheres, and it can make it look very realistic. So we're going to be opening up a file. It's Scotty Creek Coastal Bridge. Now, initially, what we're going to see is basically the bridge structure and proposed roadway and grading. What we're going to do is we're going to be exporting this out to Luminar T. As I mentioned before, Luminar T has now been integrated into MicroStation. And here at Caltrans, this is not going to be part of your initial build of MicroStation or your install. What you're going to need to do if you need Luminar T is make a request. You can either do a heat ticket or you can talk to your local CAD support and they can add it to your software installs. So again, you can use as many licenses as you would like. Now there are two versions of Luminar T. There's Luminar T Designer, which is what is built into MicroStation Connect Edition. This is a subset of what's called Luminar T Pro. Now I'm gonna be demonstrating Luminar T Pro, but everything I'm doing can be done in Luminar T Designer. There's very little difference between the two for everyday users. So initially what I'm going to be doing is exporting out what you see on the screen. So whatever is there, if it's a reference file, if it's on, if it's visible, it's going to be exported out. So I would normally go to the workflow called drawing and then change that to visualization, but I'm going to go up to the search ribbon. So all I need to know is the name of what I'm looking for. So I'm going to type in Lumen and then you can see it displayed. And if I want to know where it's located, you can see it says visualization. That's the workflow home and then Lumen RT. I'm just going to activate it from the search ribbon. And when I do that, it's going to begin the export process. You can see it's taking my design file, it's exporting it out into a separate file format, which is called LRT or LuminRT. Now it'll take a moment to process. The larger the file, the longer the process it'll take. Now LuminRT is a graphics card intensive program. So if you have a decent or good graphics card, you can see mine came up quickly here, then it will happen quickly and you'll be able to see a sense of realism very quickly. Now, if your graphics card isn't top of the line, then it may take a little bit longer and your experience may be a little bit less. Your output as far as a movie goes will be fine. Now what you're seeing here is essentially the bridge structure and the proposed roadway floating in space. Now if I hold the wheel down, you can see I can navigate around and what you're seeing in the background is my clouds and my mountains and things like that. Now I do have terrain and I didn't turn that level on. So we do want to see the terrain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close Luminar T and I can do that by going to the menu on the left, which we'll talk about in a moment. We're going to click on this and we're going to come down to exit. So I plan to turn on a level called new terrain. So I'm going to do control E. That's the keyboard shortcut to bring up my level display. You can see there's new terrain. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. I'm going to close my level display. Now I'm going to export again, and it's going to basically add my terrain to the existing Luminar T model. So I'm going to come up here to my search ribbon. I'm going to type in L-U-M, and it goes to Luminar T. I'm going to select it. And again, it begins the output process. So you're going to see this takes a little bit longer than the one before because I'm exporting out the terrain in the background. So what I did is I basically jumped ahead to when the model was exported out completely. So you didn't have to sit there and watch it. So what you're seeing here is my bridge structure, which we saw before, but now we're seeing the terrain, which also had raster draped onto it in the MicroStation file. So we're gonna go ahead and maximize Luminar T. And you can see MicroStation is running in the background. So I could literally close MicroStation. It's not required to be running after I started Luminar T. I'm going to maximize Luminar T. Now we're going to take a little bit of a tour through here. So the controls are pretty straightforward. You'll see along the bottom there, there's some uh, look around, fly through. It tells you how to use your mouse. You can use your keyboard also. If I hold the wheel down, you can see I can pan around like this. And if I go to the left side, you'll see my menu. So I'm going to go to the very top. And first thing we're going to do is look at the file. Just like most file pull down menus in software, here's where I can create a new scene. I can open or load another one and save one that I have. We also have exit down here. We also have a help button. The next one down is undo. Next one down is selection. Next one down is setup. 
And then the next one below that is sun and atmosphere settings. This is how we control what we see as far as clouds and sun and time of day. So I'm going to click on this and then you see the menu there. You can see I can control the time of day, north, the date, and the season. Now the season will make sense when I place in some trees that are seasonal. As I change the season, right now it's in the middle of the year, summer, as I change the seasons, seasonal trees will then begin to change in color. Below that we have uh, weather. This is where I can control my blue skies or cloudy. So right now I can make it cloudy. I can slide it over and make it less cloudy. So we'll just put a little bit of clouds in there. And then below that I have clear or hazy. So if it's in an urban area, I can make it hazy, but we're along the coast. So I'm just going to make this clear. So we're going to see no haze. It's very sharp and crisp. Below that we can control the direction of the clouds, the speed. Below that we have wind in the plants and we can control the wind in the plants. Now this sense of realism, the clouds moving in the background, this is being determined by the five stars in the bottom right corner. Again, my graphics card, I've got an eight gigabyte video graphics card, so I can have it set to a level of detail, which is five stars in the max. But if you don't have a powerful graphics card, you may want to set it to either auto or set it to one star. And that means that you can move around, navigate, and it won't be so fuzzy and blurry. Because if you try and put it at five stars and your card doesn't support it, then yeah, you may have some problems. But the clouds are moving in the background because I have it set to five stars. I'm going to go ahead and set it to one star. Now you can see my clouds are no longer moving. They're just stagnant because having clouds that are moving through your scene requires graphics processing. So I'm going to set this back to five stars just by clicking on the five star. Continuing on our menu on the left, I'm going to go down to terrain and ocean. Because this is along the coast, and I'm going to go ahead and move this out a bit here and zoom out. I'm going to be adding ocean in. So here's where we do this. There's the ocean settings. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to activate the ocean. And then it puts the ocean in. Now, obviously it's high tide. So I'm going to grab the arrow and I'm just going to move it down. So you can see, I can control basically where this is going to be. So we have a little lagoon there. So now we have ocean. Now I also can add terrain. I can change the background. So for example, I have rolling hills. If I click there, I can choose things like, for example, I have mountains in the background. So I'm just going to go ahead and put mountains in and it will load it in. You can see it changed the background for me. Now below that we have trees. We can add in vegetation. I have a choice of either placing it one at a time, or I can choose a number of them have multiple selection and I can basically paint in a large area very quickly. So I don't have to put in one tree at a time. We also have our variety across the top. So I could go to palm trees here. You also have a human figure there to give you an idea of scale. So right now I have a number of trees, five different trees selected. And one of those happens to be a seasonal tree and that'll be good for us. So I'm going to click the check mark. Now, right now it's got me in a place single tree mode, but on my controls, this is where I can paint instances. So I'm going to select that. Now it will need to initialize and load any trees that you don't have already on your machine. And I get this circle. Now the circle basically is my paintbrush. If I hold the left button down, I can then just paint in as I move my cursor around. So very quickly I can apply vegetation. So if I come along the other side, I can very quickly paint this in and then I can do the other side of the road there. And in no time at all, I've got quite a bit of vegetation already placed in there. Now I can also come back and erase these or, and remove them if I want to, or I can go to selection and I can pick individual trees and I can move it around. So let's say I want to move this tree uh, very close to the roadway. So we could see, you can see the shadow there. Now we also have the ability to add in people. So we can pick people, we can have them on bikes, sitting groups, gather people. We can put in pets. We also have the ability to add in vehicles. We have the ability to have a, a multiple selections here where I can choose multiple vehicles and place them in. We also have the ability to put in traffic one way, two way, four lanes, five lanes, as many as we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place in just one vehicle. And you can see I've got my one vehicle here and I'm going to place it. I'm going to left click to place it. And then I'm going to point it going in the right direction. And then when I have that selected here on my menu at the left, there's an option here. It's called 
animate settings. So now I can basically tell it where I want it to go. And I'm going to have it go around the turn like this. And I'll pan up and it looks like it's swerving a little bit. Now when I'm done on my settings, I can tell it the speed. So I can set it to, let's say, oh, 55. So I'm going to click play and I'm going to unselect. And then you see my vehicle driving through and you can see them swerving there a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so you get a sense of the vehicle driving by. Now the roadway here, you can see the roadway. That's, we don't normally have roadway that's like this unless it's a brand new concrete. So what we're going to do is change that to be like black asphalt. So I'm going to go back to my selection tool. I'm going to double click on the bridge deck. And then I can come over here and I can apply a color to it. So I'm going to make it instead of white, I can make it uh, a darker black. And you can see now it looks more like a roadway. We also have other materials. So for example, I can paint onto the ground here. I can select the ground and I can then make the ground. I can put in grass or something like that. So we can put in uh, Tahoe grass. And then you can see now I've got grass growing there. And if we zoom in close enough, we can see actual blades. Now, what we didn't see was the wind and the trees. So that's what we're going to see next. So we're going to go ahead and pan over and pan over a little bit more so we can see our trees. And we're going to come back to our atmospheres and we're going to come down to wind and we're going to slide the bar to the right and we're going to have it fairly windy. So you can see there's wind in the trees. And now we're also going to change our seasons because we have some of the trees that are seasonal. So as I slide the bar across under my season, you're going to see some of the seasonal trees begin to change. So you can see we go through the changing of the colors. So you can see not all of the trees are going to do that, just the ones that are seasonal. Now, the next thing we can do is we can do a video. So let's go ahead and unselect and move over here like this. And at the bottom, we have the ability to do uh, an animation, a video. So I'm going to click on this. And at the bottom, I can add in a video clip. And now it's going to do what we call the in-betweening. So as I zoom in, I can say add another clip. And it's done all the in-betweening for me. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And you can see now I'm following that path. You can see the vehicle there going through. So in no time at all, you can have photorealistic rendering. Now to export this out, once I'm in the movie clip, I can come down to the bottom right where it says actions. And then I can say that I want to export the clip. And then I'll get options for resolution, my destination, my quality, the format, things like that. So I can produce a video uh, very quickly. Now I already have a video of this particular model done and that's what I'm going to be sharing with you now. So this is the same bridge, same terrain, but this is further on in the Luminar T process where I've added in animals and buildings and I put in the ocean and I'm going to go ahead and hit the play for this. This is a AVI that was produced by Luminar T. So you could see in very short order, and this probably took me from export out to Luminar T to a video like this to show anybody we need to show. This probably took less than three hours to do. Now you may go through a little learning curve for it, but you working with Luminar T is very much like a video game. It's actually fun to do. So hopefully you found this informative and you'll make use of this very incredible product built into MicroStation Connect Edition.